What up guys, that comic awesome here doing another review, doing Moon Knight number 192. I know, I said after Moon Knight 191 that I would not be picking up Moon Knight anymore. But bad reviews sometimes get good views. So I went and I picked it up. And the book is def the series is definitely on a decline, but it kind of did a little bit of an uptick with this one. It didn't didn't get back up to like the first or second issue, um, but this issue kind of it it made there were parts of it that were like humorously bad, and then like Max Bemis kind of takes like a sharp right turn, and I'm. I'm interested to see where he's going to go. Um, so to kind of catch everyone up uh, in this series, there is a, uh, a mental patient who has the power of fire, um, who now associates with the Egyptian sun god of Ra. Of course, Moon Knight uh, and one of his many personalities uh, is possessed by the Egyptian god of the moon or the night, which is Ra's son, Khonshu. Um, and so there's like a natural, you know, butting of heads. Uh, in, I think it was the last issue, they talked about how through every generation there was like a moon night and like a Ra, and they would, they would battle, um, you know, the protective son of, uh, of the um, human race, would always defeat the uh, patriarchal father that, you know, enslaved and, you know, was wrong. Urgh, God is bad and patriarch. Urgh. And that was the last issue. And again, it made me just sit here and it almost in disbelief that, you know, that could actually be somebody's views. But then this one, it starts out kind of normal enough, and then um, I'm gonna skip a bit in the middle because I really want to get to the end. And I and what happens, it it's very bizarre. So just a real quick catch up. So at the end of the last issue, he had his um, estranged daughter, who we just found out about, staying at his apartment. Um, he brought uh, Frenchie, who I guess was from another run of Moon Knight which irritates the piss out of me, um, to pretty much babysit. And we'll, we'll pick up there. <clears throat> so Frenchie apparently died, and here he is kind of as a zombie, and Mark's kind of explaining to him how maybe seeing him die was the best way to um, understand his, uh, pretty much how much he cared about him um, and valued his friendship. So he's like, you know, I had to see you die. You know, it sounds bad, but um, maybe chalk it up to me accepting my dissociative identity disorder. Uh, but I needed to see you uh, die in order to make sense of your worth to me. Which is kind of, eh, that makes sense. But here, this is what irritates me. So they're having this conversation. And to find out more about what uh, Mark is talking about, uh, read the mind-bending Lemire and Smallwood run. You're going back now a um, couple of years digging into this story. Now, I know Moon Knight hadn't been a series for two or three years, but, I mean, this is this is what I talked about in, like, the awesome thoughts. Like, you really, there needs to be some sort of um, continuity. Like, I hate miniseries. Uh, they're starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> um, I want to start reading a hero and follow every step of the way and know every week that that hero is going to have a book and like follow them on their journey. That's again, a gripe, but it turns out. So he, he's not a zombie. He kind of pulls his face off, but of course I think it's just Mark being crazy because he says, don't stand on Frenchie's skin. And then the daughter is just very kind of accepting that her dad is a mental case. And she's like, you're making no sense again. You know, and then she's like, can we go see mommy after uh, I play some video games? 
then it's like your mom is missing, you're with your crazy dad, and video games is more important than um, than saving your mom. This is what it, it is to have a kid with pink hair. So I'm going to skip to... Okay, here. So uh, suffice to say, Moon Knight's captured. Uh, they're mostly a uh, fight scene um, between him and Bushman. Uh, but pretty much it, it lands him on this ship. And so he, he breaks out of captivity and he, and he kind of goes to see uh, what this ship is about. And there's these people huddled together. You know, and he's like, what is this? And it's like, hey man, they signed up for it. So he starts talking to the kid and the mom is just being, you know, the mom's like, don't talk to him, which... Again, your kid is talking to a crazy, uh, you know, a masked person. You know who this is. This isn't like Spider-Man. You know, Moon Knight's not very well known. So, you know, he keeps trying to, you know, he's like, well, what are you doing? And he's like, well, the sun guy's going to give us a place to live and, you know, where we can change the world. And the mom's like, stop talking to the guy. And he's just like, can it, mother of the year? Mother of the year, yeah. She doesn't want her kid talking to a stranger I would say that's pretty motherly um, so then it comes out that uh, he kind of goes back up to the deck and the truth is standing there and he's like you know I was wrong um, you know unlike uh, pretty much Bushman I was wrong about trying to defeat you personally um, besides my task was to deliver you so they're pretty much not gonna fight and he's like um, I just want you to see what um, what I see. And so, you know, the blue text is kind of like the truth giving him the vision. And the when the truth infects you, it's what your um, perception of the truth is. So then Mark kind of starts off and he's like, I have a vision every, every waking day. Lovers and dreamers piled waist deep in the streets. I wade through them. Um, I wade through the piles of their sacks of twisted bodies, utterly powerless, nauseated. My fear of this moment moment motivates me, um, not the desire to save lives. So, uh, Mark is saying that, like, essentially, uh, he uh, he's not motivated to help people. He's motivated out of this sick fear that everyone around him is going to just pretty much be dead. Um, he said, the fear that I built my sanity on a lie. And he says, and this is, this is where it started to get really laughably bad. Because then he says, my hope for a better world is my most tragic form of dissociation. So, Max Bemis right here is saying, I have no hope for the world. And because of that, you know, or I have, like, I have hope. But that hope is just me pretty much screaming into the wind uh, and autistic screeching. And that's pretty much it. So then we get this nice little... So we, they get to the island and Ra's kind of like, Hey man, like how's it going? They're having little chit chats. And, um, you know, he's like, look, everything's cool. We're going to build a, a, a brand new society here. Uh, everyone's going to be, you know, happy. Uh, this and that and he's like we're gonna you know go take a nap we're gonna do a ritual and uh, you know I'll see you then so then this is this is the ritual so they're sitting there uh, and he slipped him like a hallucinogenic so he starts kind of tripping and this is what I love so somehow Ra gets into Mark's head so then he's with the three personalities in Khonshu, and it's him and Ra. So, um, Khonshu says, uh, if you weren't such a loathsome fascist, um, I wouldn't be led uh, to such extreme uh, measures, father. <sighs> fascist? So, I'm going to break that down real quick. This man, who's a fascist, and the patriarch is helping build a society away from uh, greed and corruption and all of that stuff. So, I mean, calling him a fascist really isn't isn't accurate because again, he's 
he's helping these people. They they had nothing uh, in society, so now they're going to um, live on this beautiful island. Anyway, so this is this is then where I kind of Max Bemis. So this is I saw this and I said typical. You know, this is what I came to expect in this book. But then we kind of take a we take a sharp turn. <clears throat> so Ra now confronting his SJW son Conchu says, "You think me evil and wish um to have complete dominion. Witness son, surrender yourself to a, that vision." So pretty much the vision of um you know him, you know, Khonshu being in charge rather than Ra. He said, imagine life, um, ma uh, imagine saving uh, the lives of an insect breeding ground on a speck, a uh, single speck of a rock, thereby disturbing the harmony of nature, um, such triggering a cat cataclysmic collapse throughout a, a universe. Billions will die. Is that righteous? So he's saying right there, like, you save you save um a city uh but saving that city causes more a collapse of of an entire state kind of thing and he says you know imagine uh the world end it and no one is left to judge you um or condemn you no meme viruses to infect your opinion uh even in a va in even in this vacuum uh, you systematically save born killers knowing the dangers they pose to society. Is that righteous? And he says, you spare human beings pain, neglect tragedy, despite the fact that those are the things that shape, um, shape them into true prophets and saviors. You would deprave uh, the, wood, or the world uh, of their accomplishments. Is that righteous? You already are looking at a little girl as the next generation... To send off to war while claiming to be the ones who look out for her well-being. Tell me, uh, tell me, son, your campaign of peace through destruction, strength through weakness, is that righteous? Ah, and that's when I kind of was like, what the, f what the hell? Like, to me, everything that Max Bemis just said is so anti-SJW, but knowing him, knowing that he's SJW, I feel at some point he's going to pull the rug out on this. Uh, but then, of course, Mark wakes up and he says, oh my gosh, uh, Ra's right. So, I mean, it, it pretty much turns the, you're a Nazi, you're a fascist. Because again, he's like, I'm not, Ra's like, I'm not a fascist. Uh, I'm trying to maintain this world. Um, if you start trying to save, you know, every little person, he's like, all this, like, sh strength through weakness, if you keep playing victim, it's not going to work out for you. Um, if you keep trying to burn down your city um, in claims of peace, you know, through riots and stuff, it's not going to work out for you. And, you know, that's not righteous. So, again, it, it took a very interesting turn there. And, and, like, when I started to read this page, I was like, wait, wait, what? Like, this isn't what I'd expect to find here. What I expect to find here is, ah, fascist patriarch. And that's one of the reasons why I bought this book, because I wanted, I needed something to, you know, kind of chuckle at. Um, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this book anymore, but I mean, I'll keep reviewing it. It's interesting. I'd like to maybe see again where, where he's going with this. If he really is going to kind of keep that left, you know, that right turn, or if it's just going to zig back around and the rug's going to get pulled out and we're just going to be left, um, you know, being ashamed of ourselves for being, uh, being the patriarch and all that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Watch some more videos and hit me up in the comments and I will see you next time.